Thank you for this opportunity. Vince, did you figure out how to use this? Yeah, Good. Yeah, right. All righty. <laughs> These are my disclosures. Um, there's a lot of interesting things going on for intracorporeal anastomosis for colectomies, but in the interest of time, I'm going to concentrate on rectal resection for, for cancer today. I had the privilege of working with some high-level investigators in the Alliance to do a systematic review comparing minimally invasive and open resection for rectal cancer. And the short-term outcomes uh, early on were not different, nor were the long-term outcomes, but the last two uh, studies raised some eyebrows. Uh, these are the two, the Akasog study from on this continent and the a la carte study from the Australian uh, uh, country. Um, they are of non-inferiority study design. Four of the six randomized trials in this analysis were of non-inferiority study design. Their primary outcomes were composite score of distal margin, circumferential margin, and complete TME. They found that LAP was not non-inferior to open. The long-term oncologic outcomes are pending. And so we concluded in our systematic review that randomized trials for rectal cancer aren't definitive like they were for colon cancer, and that national efforts for training and standardization for PATH and MRI and, uh, and for these training efforts are warranted. The largest randomized trial comparing laparoscopic and robotic uh, rectal resection is uh, the ROLAR trial by David Jane on the other side of the Atlantic and our own Alessio Pagassi on this side and several other uh, high-level investigators. Uh, this study uh, showed a difference of 12 and 8 percent between LAP and ROBOT for conversion, their primary outcome, but the p-value on the right says that wasn't significant. And uh, subgroup analysis, there were some groups that were at higher risk, um, and the rest of their outcomes were not statistically different. Um, I show this, um, sorry if you can't see that, I show this uh, uh, table that's going to be in our um, uh, uh, review uh, manuscript, um, the uh, attention to the upper rectum if you can see it. And I just wanted to say by this that when comparing these trials we should note that there are differences and they're not all exactly comp comparable. So the Korean trial for example, all the there were no upper rectal neoplasms. They were all within nine centimeters of the anal verge. The color trial, the a la carte trial, and roll art trial, a third of the rectal cancers were upper rectal neoplasms. A lower percentage of that in the ACASOG trial, and they defined upper rectum as eight to 12 centimeters rather than 10 to 15. And their mean uh, distance above the anal verge for their study population was six centimeters. And so that affects all the other rows in this table. The percentage of APRs is uh, lower for those um, uh, with uh, upper rectal neoplasms, as is neoadjuvant therapies and temporary stomas. So the ACASOG trial, almost all of them had neoadjuvant therapy and temporary stomas, whereas in the a la carte trial, which came out uh, around the same time, only half had neoadjuvant therapy. Other MIS considerations, MIS experience, cost, perspective, is there room for other MIS options? You have a number of uh, investigators uh, following me they are going to be very informative. This is from the ROLAR trial, we're talking about experience, and it showed that with increasing robotic experience, the odds of conversion were less regardless of the surgeon's laparoscopic experience. This table shows the same thing interpreted one way. It is that a robotic surgeon with uh, 28 cases under his or her belt has the same odds of conversion as a laparoscopic surgeon with triple that experience. The study was powered at a conversion rate of 25%, as it should have been. That was the going rate for conversion at that time. Conversion decreased as the study went along, and these are some telling quotes from their discussion. Most participating surgeons were experts in conventional lap, but still in their learning phase for robotics. At the higher end of the spectrum of experience in robotics, there's evidence of a benefit uh, in conversion over conventional lap. Cost, in the, in the ROLAR study, there was a difference in cost of about $1,100 uh, in favor of the LAP approach, and that was mainly due to operating time and instruments. We did a study linking risk-adjusted clinical data in the Michigan Surgical Collaborative with risk-adjusted payer expense in the Michigan Value Collaborative, and also found that robotics was uh, more expensive than the laparoscopic approach from a, uh, of a total similar to the ROLAR study, and this was mainly in the index hospitalization and professional fees. but. The MSQC is composed of surgeons of varying degrees of minimally ex, uh, expertise. They're not all minimally invasive experts. So our conversion rate for LAP is 15%, for robot 7.6%, and the cost of conversion decreased this difference by 27%. For me, the most important part of this study is that both of them are less expensive than open. And reviewer two, the bad cop, sent me uh, 
uh, in his review, uh, his last comment after really beating me up was, robotics is not a sustainable healthcare resource. And, and though I didn't say it because I wanted the study published, my view was that open is an unsustainable healthcare resource. <clears throat> and this is why. We still do a heck of a lot of open surgery across this country and we need minimally invasive platforms that are easier to adopt. Our argument today may be obsolete five years from now. Um, you've seen what's happened over the past five years. Um, the minimally invasive uh, options change and we may be talking about something different. I thought this was a very interesting article by Zellhart and Kaiser, a literature view and nice perspective. Lap colectomy outcomes are favorable compared to open. Lap rectal resection, maybe, maybe not. Lap technology is improving too. There's 3D, 3D enhanced vision. Will these advances increase adoption? What about robotic advances? Uh, there are many options now. Will these advances merge into something different? Will the lap robot arguments be obsolete in five years? And I'm interested in what Dr. Pagazzi has to say later on in this discussion. Ta TME uh, papers are coming out and uh, are very interesting. This is an interesting study from France uh, comparing laparoscopic, t uh, t laparoscopic and robot TME and how often on the transabdominal approach you had to convert to a transanal approach. For lap it was 17%, for the robot it was 2%, and so the authors asked, does robot preclude the need for ta TME? I'm sure the, that uh, whoever's presenting that following me will have something to say far more eloquent than me. This is John Mark's experience, and I apologize for the long slide, and I'll get right to the chase. He reported an excellent single intuition experience with 370 patients. Most of them were distal rectum. Most had neoadjuvant chemo radiation. 180 open, 193 lap as part of the abdominal part of the operation. Circumferential margin 6%, very comparable to the national randomized clinical studies. And this begs the question, can we improve on on this. It's not just surgeon factors that influence circumferential margin, it's patient factors too. They concluded that oncologic margins and survival data are promising. What's next? The color of three trials, a randomized trial comparing transanal and traditional TME for rectal cancer, short and long-term outcomes for low and mid-rectal cancers. Uh, their primary endpoint is circumferential margins and it's powered on 1,100 patients. Uh, estimated completion date, 2025. Hope I'm still alive for that. <laughs> Star Trek study, randomized trial comparing watch and wait uh, versus TME. This is a phase two feasibility study to see if they can increase recruitment beyond that in phase one. There are three arms to their randomized trial. Uh, endoscopy and MRI used to grade uh, tumor regression at an appropriate interval. Non-responders go to TME, responders reassessed, and those who get a complete clinical response progress to active surveillance. Estimated completion date, 2021. Lastly, um, I found this trial very, very interesting. If you read the protocol for this, it's one of the most unbelievable, well-written uh, manuscripts uh, I've, I've ever seen. L uh, those with locally advanced rectal cancer that present without metastatic disease on imaging, a third of them will develop metastatic disease. And those who get post-operative chemotherapy, only half get a full course because of surgical complications, uh, frailty, or refusal to have the chemotherapy. And so these authors uh, suggest that we should be getting all of our adjuvant therapies, chemotherapy and radiation um, pre-op. And so they have two randomized arms. One is an induction arm. They get the full FOX before the uh, standard chemo radiation. And the consolidation arm, they get the full FOX after standard uh, chemo radiation. They get assessment at appropriate intervals with endoscopy and MRI. And uh, those that uh, uh, don't have a significant uh, response get TME. Those that do have a significant response and, or get a complete or near complete clinical response go to the watch or wait or non-operative management arm. Uh, their outcomes are organ preservation at three years, treatment compliance, adverse events and surgical complications. They're also comparing those in the randomized arms with historical controls. I'm told by one of the authors that accrual is complete and so they'll be waiting for their uh, three-year follow-up for oncologic outcomes. In conclusion, MS, uh, MIS technology is evolving. MIS options are evolving. And as MIS surgeons, though not everything I told you today is robotic specific, we need to be cognizant as robotic surgeons about what's going on in the literature landscape. Thank you for this opportunity. <laughs>